My name is Simeon Bankoff. I'm the Executive Director of the Historic Districts Council. It's a pleasure to welcome you all here on our continuing 40th birthday festivities. Um, well, you're all here because you know what HGC does. And you're here to find out where we actually came from. But it is my extreme pleasure to introduce uh, Tony Wood, a man who needs little introduction, yet I'm doing it anyway. Uh, our HTC Lion, Chair Emeritus, Guiding Spirit, and um, really irreplaceable resource, Tony. Tonight, we turn to the creation of the Historic Districts Council. With its birth a mere 40 years ago, we are in the rare position of having with us tonight those present at its conception. The most tangible proof of our work was really getting the districts to be defined, and it also, I think, to help the landmark staff a lot, because they, they needed help, and they needed the advocacy that not only MAS provided at hearings and such, but also they created a dialogue. They got to know, literally, the people who were living in historic buildings, whether they were recognized as such at that point or not. And we worked very hard at that, and I know I would get calls on the weekends from people who said, oh, you know, so-and-so is trying to change a window or demolish a building. And, you know, we were sort of the preservation police on one level because we were so visible. And I know you and I used to sit around at breakfast saying, I think I grow this thing. You know, <laughs> can we take it over? <laughs> and uh, we did. <laughs> an, an actual physical polling of all the people that they met uh, they then discovered that people were walking three blocks out of their way to go by the historic buildings in order to go home. They, they actually traced the paths of people walking on the streets. And it showed me, especially, I was, I was flabbergasted by the fact that they, they Unknowingly, people were going out of their way to go by historic buildings rather than new buildings. And it, that realization, I think, was, was something that, that the Landmarks Commission itself didn't understand. Uh, I do remember that at the beginning of my experience with HDC, one of the big issues, uh, especially because of our interest in expanding the historic district movement, was that there were so many owners who were reluctant because of fear of losing value of their homes. And uh, this was a, a, a huge impediment to getting districts designated because, of course, the Landmarks Commission uh, wanted to make sure that at least a majority of the residents and landowners in the area uh, backed the formation of the district. In fact, it may be that they wanted it substantially uh, 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 uniform, I'm not sure. Um, but it, it was important to convince people that there, there was value to being part of an historic district, that there was reciprocity of regulation. So in this period, this short period of time, which is exactly as Tony set it up, that there's enough power to think, well, well, maybe we should have some plans. The, the public was behind it, but the instruments weren't there. So these instruments were invented more or less simultaneously. And they more or less acted as they, they should. I mean, the, the, the HTC is fueled by the energy and the love that people have for their own neighborhoods. And that works generation after generation. So there, there, there are of those hundred and how many? Five? Hundred and two. Hundred and two. I think districts. unless something happened today or this week that yeah, I don't know, I think it was hundred and two. Probably the uh, early organizers, uh, of the HTC, couldn't identify about 70 of those districts, I think. So tonight's program is, is both the Historic Districts Council <coughs> and the New York Preservation Archive Project. Uh, and part of what the Archive Project does is try to capture <coughs> the type of history we've begun to hear tonight. Uh, and these are not the only wisdom bearers of that history. Uh, and so we've been doing oral histories with other people. There are other people in this room who have incredible stories to tell. Some of them we've captured on tape. Some we've encouraged other groups to capture. Because this isn't just for the record. I think this really helps us better understand where we are today, how we got here. But it also is, is instructive in terms of where we may need to be going 
you know, preservation probably needs to continue to think about how do we reinvent how we do preservation as advocates. How do we look at the present arrangement of organizations as they've evolved and we look to the needs of the future? And I think we're much better positioned to do that when we have a good sense of how we got to where we are and how the HDC was born and turned 40 and boy, it looks, doesn't look too old. But anyway, I want to thank everybody on the panel. You guys were a wonderful job.